as you can see, um, when, when Fida will come, I will uh, introduce her. Uh, but I will start with uh, uh, our uh, special guest to, to join us to this panel. And we don't use, we, we are in the AGMs that I was uh, involved in. And, um, we really bring people from outside the community to speak to you. But I thought that this topic, uh, special this topic, because we are, we are questioning that and repeating, and we are dealing with this question, how, how come after 40 years of Wahd al-Salam, Neve Shalom, we don't have Israeli-Palestinian regional uh, friend association or a circle, uh, circles of supporters. Um, in the last five-year plan, the last AGM, when we talk about um, uh, the supporters around us, we, we, we in the CND office build a model of circles from different uh, uh, fields to uh, be a friend of us and uh, uh, familiar. Fida, we're <laughs> looking for you. I know, I told them. So, okay. <laughs> um, so we were wondering together and we want to uh, speak frankly about the obstacles of why um, this amazing community, the, this uh, facility, this project, this ongoing success that we had and with all the challenges outside the village in Israel, in the Middle East, why we are not so popular. When, um, when I prepared Shuli and Fida to this uh, uh, session, I, I said, this is, this is the question. This is the main question, and I want to have more you know, um, open conversation between us and um, um, the model that we believed. And I think that we are now, um, you know, having, uh, making some progress in that, that we have a circle of friends of the media, from the media, from the politi political arena, or from uh, the social activists, or the, you know, um, um, different fields, um, the um, most, I think a challenging circle is the uh, philanthropy and business uh, uh, people uh, who, who can be, you know, one of, you know, in our circle of contributors. So, um, so I invited people who know something about share society and involved in this issue, something like me in like 20 years of, of experience. And uh, <laughs> you are much more than 20 years. So I'm thrilled and happy to, um, to open with um, uh, David Broza. When uh, when we thought about you know in the in the staff why why David because we want to ask someone who uh, his grandfather uh, was one of the founders and he was uh, the first man uh, actually buried in, in the village and he is in the, all the black and white photos and he's one of the people who really pushed Bruno to this uh, project and we have very unique uh, long-term connection with David and we usually ask you to to come to sing and this evening you're come to talk <laughs> so we'll, we'll discover this uh, talent and um, you didn't choose to live with us and, but you know the Israeli society, you know the mentality, you know lots of things about, you know, the people from your generation and the upcoming generation. And one, we want to hear from you um, um, about this. Uh, Fida, as you see, Fida is, um, is very uh, old uh, friend of mine and we are the same age almost and we are very active in the feminist uh, uh, um, uh, issues but um, when I first heard Fida uh, speaking about her uh, activism and work in the shared society in Mahbakh Taghir, the feminist group that she, feminist organization that she's leading now or co-leading with her Jewish community, say something special with this, like we, I have to dig more about her background um, beside the um, uh, fighting gender-based violence. And then she spoke and, and she told, you know, the story about being here as a child in Wahd al-Salam Neve Shalom. And uh, the famous Tab'oni family, they say the first family who lived or uh, leave the, the village. So, so Fida is, uh, is, you are the first generation actually at the school? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. She's on the, on the pictures also. 
and Yuan <laughs> Shirin. Um, uh, so Fida, um, you are Palestinian women, very, very active in social justice movement. You are political activist, and uh, she's a member of Hadash. And while we traveled, we, have a, we shared a panel in, in, uh, in New York two weeks ago, a week ago, I think, it's like one week ago. And she actually, I heard that she started her campaign for the next Knesset. And <laughs> I have I have witnesses here, right, Bob? Yeah. So <laughs> she uh, she ran. She I think that she, we will see her in the Knesset next uh, uh, term, and we are very proud of that. Um, um, Fida is um, is um, is the um, for me the hope of, of the not only the Palestinian women in the leadership, it's all the women in Israel uh, at, or in, in general, and I'm, I'm really honored to be with you in this uh, panel. Uh, uh, Shuli Dichter. It's always confusing with Shuli because we love him and we uh, sometimes I'm afraid of him. But uh, two years ago, <laughs> Shuli, Shuli led for many years shared society organization, uh, he worked in Sikui, and, um, and uh, she, he was in hand in hand. And when he resigned hand in hand, I said, like, he's free now, so we can invite him. To, uh, he's not a uh, competitor anymore. So, um, ah, with, with donors, you always work. <laughs> so we, we always, like, meet in the, the right circles about bilingual binational education and uh, um, uh, we also have hidden agenda, political agendas, and that you probably will hear about someday. Um, uh, but uh, there is no one, I think, in the nonprofit organization, the civil society organization, who were involved for many, many years in Arab uh, Jewish relationship, and uh, like truly, and he also published uh, in 2015 uh, a book named Beyond the Best in. Tensions, okay? So now I have beyond the dialogue or, or the power of the dialogue and you're going beyond and we will hear about uh, that. So I will give uh, each of you to uh, speak for um, seven minutes, meaning like in Arabic, uh, 10 minutes and uh, Arabic timing, yeah. So, uh, and then uh, we will have um, um, like questions and answers and other stuff. Well, it's I can only speak from my own point of view and, and my experience. As you mentioned, I, I actually came here when it was just a barren hill and Father Bruno was here. And I remember my grandfather with his great idea to, uh, to uh, find a way to create a school for peace. That was his dream. He said, there's schools for war, there's army schools, military schools, but there's no school for peace. And then he met other young people. He was not young, he was 80 at the time, or maybe 77. And, uh, but he's, he gathered around him some younger, very young people like Nava, who just walked out, but where's Nava? Yeah, Nava and Kobe, her husband, and a bunch of others who um, found that this was a, a very feasible dream, something worth living for. And finally, they made it up here to the hill and started frequenting here and meeting here. And Father Bruno, I think, uh, softened his his stance and uh, accepted them and, and eventually they built the first houses here and moved here. So I've been coming through all these processes and uh, it was always somewhat of a, not a secret, but something that nobody quite spoke about because nobody could understand that this could actually be the beginning of a shared society example. It was unfathomable. It was not, the country wasn't geared for it. We were not educating for it. Uh, it was still predominantly, this is the J new Jewish homeland, and this is what matters. Over the years, as we can see evolution, things begin to change. And even though Neve Shalom still is uh, 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 somewhat of a, of a different type of uh, establishment and a society, and people look at it suspiciously, uh, I get questioned many, many times when I say to people who don't know me other than my music, uh, and I tell them how involved I am in in trying to bring people together, um, do uh, conflict resolution uh, events, and uh, always it leads to Neve Shalom wa al Salam. And they say to me, oh, that place. And I say, what about that place? 
it's such a failure. I'm thinking, is that so? I'm thinking, and then I have to. T I find I have to teach them that the reason why this place is so important and is such a success is because of the failure all around it. And if you and if you have failure around it, and you cannot instill in the society that surrounds you the basics, which are the educa educating and reconditioning people towards mutual understanding and shared community, then of course you're a failure. Until you reach that moment when everybody lifts up that, that dream and, and, and swears by it, then it is a failure. But it's not the failure of Neve Shalom, it's the failure of the system, the failure of the, of the environment, and the failure of human beings to change overnight. And we've been here for about 100 years, the Jews, and 70 years of independence, and it will take more than three or four or five generations to bring that real change. We have to really hit deep roots in this land before we can actually, I mean literally, meaning we have to really be, become part of the land before we can understand the value and how to actually incorporate everybody who lives in this land to become one, one society, wholesome society. And right now, we're in a big break because the actual shared society notion is threatening the fundamentalists who don't want a shared society. And so they're, they're, they're actually acting much more violently protecting their ideologies and threatening what we dream of to have as a shared society. And we're facing them. But we have to understand it takes long time, it takes more than just a generation, as I said, and patience, and of course, to deliberate on it and actually be together. Um, I come here to Neve Shalom not as much as I would like to, not as much as I used to, because in the last 20 years, these past 20 years, I've con concentrated on establishing special events and special relationships in East Jerusalem, including the refugee camp there, which is uh, Shuafat, which is a very, very uh, extreme reality within the Israeli uh, uh, borders. And uh, it needs a lot of attention. No Israeli dares to even think that they can be in uh, East Jerusalem and, and, and promote coexistence or, or uh, do conflict resolution, even as a, as a concept. Uh, and it, so it has taken me further away from Neve Shalom for all these 20 years, but I keep coming back, visiting, and you know, going to visit my grandfather and my two grandmothers that are basically buried here. And, um, I, have, I, I do have great um, confidence in all this that Neve Shalom has, has been built on and all that Neve Shalom is doing and promising. But I, I really think the key element and the reason why we think that we don't, that Neve Shalom doesn't have friends is because the people are still not conditioned to it and it's going to take some more time. But the, but the promising thing is that more than ever we have in every corner of this country of this land, there are people working on, on the shared society dilemma and issue, and they're talking about it. We have more members of Knesset, from Khadash, from the Arab, from the Arab um, uh, minorities, than ever. And if there's 20% Arabs living in this country, there should be 20% members of Knesset in, in the near future, for example. You know? <laughs> It'll grow. It will grow. It's un no, I'm, okay, it's not a joke. No, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. But what I'm saying is, it is very hopeful, and while you're at it and you're in it, like everybody in Vashalom, you do feel that you're alone because you cannot, be, you cannot see from the outside into the inside. You can only see from here to the outside. And the outside is very different. The outside spells a very different reality. And this is why Neve Shalom is every day more important than ever before. The idea was fantastic. Implementation was incredible, literally, by the word. But to continue it, and to give it strength to continue, is ever so more important now than ever before. Because the tools are here. The knowledge is here. Nava can attest to that. I know that she's been documenting and is in charge of knowing all, where all the protocols have been of every word that has been spoken here and anywhere else, just to prove how much progress has been done. Who's going to study it and create the thesis on it? I don't know. But it's a living place, and it does send a lot of very positive messages. And so you, you do have friends. Many of them are reluctant. Oh, maybe they don't know you need to know that you have friends. So we have to do more on a promotion, on public relations, more music events, which I know 
give make a we had a, a fantastic concert here at, at 13 years ago with the, Roger Waters did the Dark Side of the Moon 2006 which I was part of organizing it 65,000 people came probably a thousand knew what Neve Shalom was all about but 64,000 walked away with the, with Neve Shalom in their mind that was an amazing concert it doesn't matter what the context was but the opening acts you had Arabs and Jews playing together. You had mixed music playing together. And who wants, who cares? He did his bit. He, he should come again. He has so much to say about this place. He should tell it right from within here. But the point is that the more events you do here, then the people find that it's a much more accessible and friendly place. Every event is major, as long as it's public. Hmm? Annual concert. Annual, as much as you can. But it might be too much annual. Perhaps. Whenever it's possible, whenever the weather permits, you should have. You should have it. We used to have it here on the hill. Yeah. We'd have fifteen hundred or three thousand people, and then, of course, sixty-five thousand is uh, just in the in the hummus field. Yeah, it cost it cost uh, half a million dollars to buy the hummus, which was not ripe. Had to be thrown. Had to build six six bridges to have access, and it was. 2006, and it was the biggest traffic jam in the history of, of Israel. So I thought that we just talk about the problem, not the solution. Um, I think I'm here, first of all, because I'm, I'm, I will talk as a Palestinian and as a woman. Samah all, all the time need to, uh, women in panel. You know, to, to hear from Samah all the positive things, it's very, very, very unique. I all the trip to, <laughs> yeah, because all the trip in USA, I told her, Samah, you will write article. You, if, if you read her articles and her post in Facebook, you will know about what I'm talking. She's very radical. She's very, uh, uh, critical, critical, critical critique, and you laugh when you read the uh, Samah. Yes, yes, yes. So... For the political side that she talked about, I am think make change the policy, changing thing here. You should not be just in the Knesset. You can make change from uh, the everywhere. Uh, this is what I, uh, I believe. And I think in our situation now, even it's better not to be in the Knesset. So it's, not, uh, it's better uh, not to be there. So for your question, uh, Samah, I think, first of all, the, I will talk more about the Palestinian society, why Neve Shalom Wahd Salam have less friend, or I don't know if they if there are any friend. Yeah, of course. You know, I'm, I'm one of them. You know, when I talk about Neve Shalom Wahd Salam everywhere that I'm, um, because I think this is the present that I get from my parents, and people who live in Neve Shalom now, Wahd Salam, and they know my parents, they will say, yeah, because uh, it was very, very, very privileged for me to leave the city and to come and sit and live in uh, live in village with a Jewish. Uh, when I talk in Hebrew, nobody can understand if I'm Palestinian or Jewish, and I like this because I can switch between identity, and nobody can realize if I'm Palestinian or Jewish, and it's uh, funny sometimes, especially with people that uh, uh, very hate Palestinians, you know. Popular. Yes, so to, to live here, to know the other, it's really like the present that I get from my parents, um, and it's to, to not just to understand or believe in partnership, it's to live the reality, to be part of a, a partnership. And I think it's that's why I'm now in the NGOs, in Mahbakh Taghir, in the field that try to build a shared society, not just in Neve Shalom, outside of Wahd Salam Neve Shalom. As a very uh, a patriarchal society, the Palestinian society is still a very patriarchal society. Most of the people, in, uh, the Arab Palestinian people, live in the north or in the south. Uh, most of our life, daily life, it's very uh, um, the family. You know, it's mean that even my brother live uh, one uh, um, 
floor from uh, up of my family. So this is kind of a very traditional and very patriarchal uh, society. It still, even in Nazareth, as the big city, as uh, you know, so this is things, and Neve Shalom, it's the opposite of, of this kind of life. It's, there is no, I think the Ramle Lud and the um, Abrosh, they are the most close, but it's still very far away from uh, uh, the Arab society, even as a geographic uh, area, especially that most of the Palestinians are live in the north or in the south. Second thing, the Palestinian, the Palestinian society are, um, suffer from violence, suffer from racism, suffer from poverty. So we are really in our problem more. And if you want to bring people to believe in shared society and to support shared society, they should be more, a little bit more privileged. The Palestinian society are in, we are in our problem as a society. We, every day, we hear someone killed. Every day in Nazareth, every day, it's not just in the night, even in the middle of the day, you can hear shooting. It's happened to me and in 10, two o'clock in Nazareth, um, and someone shoot someone and nothing happened. 10 minutes, cars continue to, to their way and you know, it was for me shocked that nobody, we stop for 10 minutes and then keep going, that's it. So we talk about 60% uh, um, 60, 16, 60 of the people who are in the jail are Palestinian in this country. We talk about 400, uh, 400,000 illegal weapons are in the Palestinian society. So this kind of problem, I think, don't help people to, to support more the shared society and not to support Neve Shalom as a part of, as the model of shared society. I, I, I work in, Mahapach um, Tarir work in disadvantaged community in the periphery in, with Jewish alone and Palestinian alone and then we bring people together, students, children and women. And it's not easy. But when you start to work with people from their daily problem, and then they realize suddenly, as a mother for children that have a problem in school, she as a mother from Nazareth and the other mother from Kiryat Shmona or from Haifa have the same problem, and they just start to sit because of the same problem, sometimes it's easy for them uh, more than to live in the same place or to to talk about occupation or to... So we should understand there is different models and different ways and different that we can build a shared society. Neve Shalom, and I really like this place, is the most privileged place uh, for shared society. And for Palestinian, it's the privilege. You know, you never have, you cannot live in a village with this kind of uh, individual life. Because village in our uh, uh, culture, it means that you are more part of family, you, are, you less have individual life. So when you are suffer from problem, it's, you cannot build uh, or think about the privilege, how you can help privileged people. But I want to say something very important, and I remember this when I was a child here. Kahana, right? Kahana say that he want to come to visit uh, Neve Shalom or something. Uh, and I remember it was in, uh, to visit, yeah. Mayor Kahana, Mayor Kahana right. Uh, want to take all the Palestinians to the, to the sea for, uh, and not coming back. So I remember uh, that a lot of people came 
to support Wahd al-Salam. Real friend, you can know where, where, when, where is your real friend when you have a problem. And then people can come and stop behind you. Stand, stand for you and being there. Uh, so, and I know as a part of the Palestinian society, this is something that we know to do very good. Not with the people who shoot, you know, not with the, with the crime, not with the weapon, but we still, as a very traditional, uh, actually, we are traditional, we are in the middle of making a change, but we still very basic on uh, um, the family, living beside the family, being part of the family, helping the family, the community, the, my neighborhood, my uh, uh, village, my city. And it's something good. We can use it for making a change. Community is something good. We need life of community. It can make really change. But uh, uh, to leave the community and come to sit and live here, and, or not, or just to support. And what's the meaning of support? To bring, even the people who will come to the concert, or to, I think there will be, there should be people with cars, people who can come to here, people who can afford the ticket. So we should open, I think, as a, I, I, it's a question not just for Wahd salam it's a question for us as a people who build a shared society, how we can make building a shared society not just for people who are privileged. And I am talk as a very privileged Palestinian woman. I know exactly my place. But how we can open it, how we can... Uh, um, Langish, make it available for and accessible for everybody. And what's the meaning of being friend and support? Is it just money? It can be in other way. So then it can open it uh, uh, for for it. And unfortunately, I think now in our society, as a Palestinian society to build a very um, a strong shared society, we need first of all, we can do both, you know, but first of all, now we should deal very quickly with our problem as a Palestinian society, to bring people, the racism that we live every day in this country, the violence, the poverty, the, uh, our problem as a woman who, who live in a very, very, uh, um, uh, patriarchal society, this is the next step that we can think about building a shared society. But still, I think, the privilege of the Palestinian society, there is a lot of people that if La uh, Samahallah, if Nabi Shalom will have Wahd Salam, we have any problem now with any, and we have a lot of uh, uh, right and racist and I'm sure that everybody will come and see what we can help, what we can do, how we can support. What, and this is the meaning of being a friend, at least for me, in our reality. In my perception of Neve Shalom, uh, Neve Shalom, Wahat Salam, Wahat Salam, Daiman, Kanat, the beacon. Uh, always Neve Shalom for me um, uh, was a beacon of uh, light um, and a, an example. Uh, when I'm saying always, uh, since early 80s, since they started. Um, uh, I was active in Givat Chaviva at that time, since the 70s, and Neve Shalom immediately, suddenly, became the thing. Because they crossed all the boundaries and actually actualized the, the, the ideas, um, which Givat Chaviva was prevented from doing so, as, as, a, as, a, as an institution that belonged to a Zionist movement. Uh, and therefore, um, Neve Shalom, to me, as well as to, I believe, the few thousand, thousands of people, or now you can say even um, uh, more than 
to 20,000 people who are involved in um, uh, building shared society, uh, this way or another, Neve Shalom is the beacon until today. So in terms of impact of Neve Shalom, uh, Neve Shalom is, uh, the, is privileged by being the pioneer. Uh, and therefore, the most impa impactful organization. But not only this. Uh, I've been directing programs in the field of shared society since uh, 80s. And always in my staff, there, was, uh, there were um, graduates of Neve Shalom, of the um, uh, School of Peace of Neve Shalom. School for Peace, for Peace of Nur Shalom. And they are always most vibrant, pushing ahead um, um, members of the staff. Uh, they, they are bringing this, uh, if I would say, the light of the beacon outside. Now, this, is, this in itself already by virtue of being influenced by Neve Shalom. Neve Shalom has a rather large uh, circle of friends. In Israel, I believe, so also abroad. Uh, it is true and sometimes said that the weaker you are, you search for more um, uh, ilham, yani inspiration. Okay, uh, so, <laughs> uh, 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 yes, <laughs> some, 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 uh, it's not, uh, uh, yeah, until I, went, I, I was in Canada for three years, in early 90s, until then, Arabic was my second language. Uh, only then, English took over, and now, with the, with the, with the Facebook um, uh, morning delights that I have from Samach, from her posts, usually in the morning at six, <laughs> six ish. The jet lag. Um, not on, not always the jet lag. Also, you don't, you, you often, don't sleep. you sleep very little, <laughs> and I enjoy it. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm sharpening my Arabic with uh, Samach's posts. Another virtue that Neve Shalom uh, sends out strongly is the stamina. One, the stamina, the, 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 um, the resilience, uh, the uh, vitality and the strength. The, the Neve Shalom so shows stamina more than any other solitary experience that I know. Mind you, the kibbutz movement is collapsing. Neve Shalom is, is enlarging it, is growing, expanding. Now, the kibbutz movement is now going, um, uh, converting and, and, and expanding again. But, but movements, ideological movements, and, and ideological um, uh, um, uh, experiences and experiments are uh, having ups and downs. Neve Shalom, Wahd Salam, shows sumud, stamina, resilience, that, that is unique, I think. Okay? Now, one of the jobs uh, uh, that I took on is to direct hand in hand the bilingual schools. And hand in hand, the entire uh, and I just uh, since, uh, since uh, it's it's on the on the bio. <laughs> um, for for seven years, I I, I have directed this uh, um, uh, hand in hand, and there, in, uh, by, by nature, hand in hand is actually an extension of Neve Shalom, of Wahd Salam. Uh, and I, I got it with three schools now. There are six schools. And the seventh school is, is on the way. And uh, it's scaling up. So I don't know. If, if you want to have friends, 
um, um, uh, about 2,000 students of hand in hand and their families, which is uh, getting up to uh, 10 or 15,000 people, are quite friends of yours. <laughs> in Israel, it's clear that uh, and the regime and the social order in Israel is of separation between Palestinians and Jews. Uh, we're separated uh, by the system, not by, will, by, by our own will. It is true that the own will of the people goes with the system, like all, all average people. And um, uh, David said uh, tr uh, truthfully that people um, the, who do not know wouldn't even imagine such thing and also, when they know it's not enough, because we, um, Fida and myself, we want them to be active. It's not enough to know and to support and to do like on the Facebook. It's good. We like the likes, but uh, it's not enough. We want them active. What does it mean to be active? It's to bring others in. It's building power, civic power. And civic power must have some uh, kind of infrastructure and structure and much, much discipline, much organizational discipline. I'm not talking about um, um, building power to go out for a war. It's building power to go out for peace. Still, it's the same attitude that you have to to, to develop and to, to foster among the people who are with you. It is so hard because the very nature of breaking, of disrupting the system of separation and getting together, the very nature of the people who are doing this is that they are not going with the order. But in order to build true, real, actual political power, you need order, okay? Now, its contradiction can be bridged, bridged, bridged over. I mean, we can, we can, I think it's, it's possible. Um, today, I think, um, I think that in the end of the second decade of the 21st century, um, we have many, many more involved people from the right reasons, actually the left reasons, and, uh, and um, many, many more. I'm talking about thousands of people. I believe if we, if we really count, we can reach 25,000 people involved. Um, and of course, uh, you can ask what involvement is, uh, doing like on the Facebook, or coming to one meeting every month, or to... Or, participating in something once a year or whatever. We can, we can fight over the criteria, but many people are involved. Now the question is how we make them a civic power that can actually change attitudes and change atmosphere and even change the Knesset. <laughs> he will find uh, yeah. Um, it, 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 it's a long journey, but I think that, I mean, since I'm not a director of an organization, I'm free. You're free. <laughs> Unlike you guys who are, who are committed. No, no, the, the panel. <laughs> Uh, committed and so forth. I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to these kind of gather, gatherings more and more, and I hear many kinds of ma people from of many uh, aspects and, and angles. I'm sorry, but I'm getting more and more optimistic. I, I want to add more comments. I, I think that we should ask questions and and to discuss and. Uh, I really want everyone to uh, be part of what we are trying to uh, understand and learn here because we, from this session, we, um, in the CND office, we want to um, put a plan 
what to do and what we can do tomorrow and in five years and, and ten years, besides electing the right people. But just following on, I mean, wh wh why then has the... I'm Andrew Burns. I was British ambassador here from 92 to 95. Absolutely the Rabin years. Oh. I arrived the day he was sworn in and left the two days after we buried him. But wh what has happened to the left wing in this country? Why has it collapsed? That's a great puzzlement, really. Uh, I would like to know your opinion about how Palestinians live in uh, mixed cities as uh, Akko, Haifa, uh, Jaffa, etc. I will um, more focus on the question uh, for the mixed city, but I just want to say something about the left in all over the world something happened. But um, I just came back in, um, I was in uh, Germany in a conference for feminist women from uh, the left movement uh, in all over the world. And all the talk about, maybe we should ask our, ourselves question about democracy and what she bring and what happened to the left in all over uh, uh, the world, not just uh, here. But I think one of our problems as a left in Israel, as the journalist, and the journalist is, is, is the left now in Israel, is the left stop talking about occupation, stop talking about hardcore issue like uh, war, what? Quality, quality, justice even before quality. Um, the last to war uh, in Gaza, it takes time to merit and to other to have an opinion and to say something about it. And it's, a, of course, it's the relation with the right, with the racism, with the, what's happening here with, uh, uh, with, with Bibi. And maybe I think, and this is a hard, hard something that I will say, NGOization. A lot of active people go to NGOs to work as a work, and sometimes it didn't help us as a movement, as a left movement. So it's, it's more, there's a very big question about the left in all over the world, especially here in Israel. I think when we all be, start to be far away from the main issue that we should deal with, the occupation, it make us, you know, there is a wonderful movement of uh, women wage peace that I really appreciate their work. They decide not to say the word occupation. And it's, it's not, to deal with that. not to deal with that and not just talk about, and I think it's important to bring more people from the Jewish community to be active, especially very privileged uh, uh, women. But this is one of, our problem as a, as a, a left. Uh, and I know sometimes now I can be in the same room as a Palestinian with left friend, and they will, sometimes they will attack her more than me in, in, in the same room. And it's really sad what's happening here. Just that they know that she are left. She even didn't say anything against occupation. But because she's a Jewish and a left, they can attack her more than me as a Palestinian. So it's, uh, it's happened just in Tel Aviv, and not all the world. For the mixed uh, city, actually I live for more than uh, 12 years in uh, Nazareth Elite. It's now called Nofa Galil. It's not shared society. For me, it was like being in a hotel because you leave the city at the morning, you, your children have a school in a Arab or a village near, you don't have any work there. Your cultural life is in a other uh, Arab city. It was all my life was in Nazareth, and just come came back and stay in the night at the hotel. And sometime I didn't sleep in my home because if I already have a wedding, so I will stay in, in my parents' home and change the clothes there, and then stay for another night there. So this is not just my life. Most of the Arab people who live, for example, in Nazareth elite, it's really uh, close to Nazareth. People don't have any life there. We, but I, but, but something very important, but because there are now more and more people who live in this 
סיטיז, את כרמיאל, נזרת עילית, באר שבע, עכו, עכו, קריית שמונה. It start to be as a reality that the people should deal with it. It's me now, I was, I'm start the active in Nazareth Elite for the build a, a, a school, Arab school. And now it's almost start. It will start as a shared society in Nazareth Elite. And I think, Yad Biyad, Ken, Nukhon? But wait, but it's just the start. We need to work a lot. It's not okay, shared society. Yeah. It's not Arabic school. It's, there's no equal life between people. The most يعني, shared uh, can be good morning, good evening. Because go this not is shared. even <laughs> not coexist. It's just, you know. And I, as a one who was active all my life in a shared society, I never tried to do anything in these cities because most of the time it's, it's uh, most of the Arab who live in this city sometimes is a very privilege more than Ju the Jewish who live in Nazareth elite, for example. Yeah, but I think Nazareth elite, Nazareth uh, elite, what Nofa Galil, it's a little bit different because it was based as a Jewish uh, uh, city and because of the housing problem in Nazareth. So um, like uh, wealthy couples or people who can afford to buy a house in the next Jewish city uh, moved there. And this is the same case that she said about in Ma'lot Tarshiha, Karmael, Kriyat Shmone, which is because of the housing problems in the Arab society. And they like, they uh, settle in the next uh, Jewish uh, um, town. And now we have this uh, law that uh, actually gave the mayors and the municipal council also uh, um, the authority to, um, with the national state law as well, um, not to give access to housing in, uh, for, for Arab population in Jewish cities. It happened in Afula when 50 Arab families win this, how we call it, Mikhraz? Bid. To build, um, they just apply like anyone and they win the place. They are from Nazareth and Niksal and uh, Afula is a Jewish city. So, um, so the people demonstrate against the mayor, and one of and his campaign uh, was that we will cancel that uh, arrangement and we will start over. So, um, I think Fridel was asking about uh, Palestinian uh, towns like Yaffa, Akka, Haifa, uh, who became mixed after '48, and what's happening there between Arab and Jewish that they already in mixed city. And uh, um, I think this is the question, right? Because she also lived in Yaffa, um, um, so I, I think this is the... This is a very hard situation, because practically we're talking about gentrification. And, um, but this gentrification, there are two sides of it. There's a uh, um, harsh, capitalistic, rude side of gentrification. And there are the soft gentrifiers. And cute, cute <laughs> Samah would say. I say soft. Um, and they do not really understand what's the problem. They came to live together. It's also in the Galilee, by the way, yeah. in the um, uh, outposts in the Galilee. Yeah. 28 outposts in the Galilee were established in, in, in 1982. People came there to live with the Arabs, Jews from the cent central Israel. They wanted, yes, but they, they wanted to get close to the Arabs. And then they were surrounded with a fence and a yellow gate that is blocking everything. And they did, until now, many of them, do not really understand what's the problem. They're sending their kids to hand in hand school in the Galilee, in, in Misgab, in the heart of these, and in Jaffa, and in Haifa, and in Jerusalem. The issue here again is the order, the social order of separation that is being built here for 70 years, for more, for 100 years. And we're battling it now. We're trying to disrupt it, to bash it, to cross the borders, to, to, 
to dismantle the, 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 the walls that are there between the people. And it's so hard because always, I mean, uh, um, Samah mentioned uh, the book I published, and uh, actually Samah related to it very generously. She came to one of the gatherings with the book in Jerusalem. I think it survived. Of course, it was uh, uh, the, uh, the most uh, joyful criticism I, re I, I received. Um, um, it's a list, it's uh, 12 stories and six reflections on the stories. And um, it's all the stories are stories of failures of mine. Because the more, the many more steps you make towards the other, the other side, and you're doing it because you, you want to do it and you have good intentions. It's the book is on tension about the good intentions of the Jews. Um, and there's something always beyond the best intentions there. That you need to make sure that you don't let yourself out of it. Okay? And it's, frankly, we can call it the, 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 the balance of power between us. That it's always there, imbalanced here in Israel. And it's imbalanced due to the very system that we live in. And the activists and the people in the uh, uh, mixed cities are making the efforts to cross it and to get to the other. On, from both sides, they're doing it. Not only the Jews are going out. Many Palestinians are going out to get to the Jews there. They're, I think that their task is to make it from a mixed city to a shared city. In a shared city, the balance of power is much more equal than in a mixed one. It's like the difference between uh, coexistence and shared society. I, I just want to add something very important. We start to work now in a very poor neighborhood in Akka, Akka, Akko, with a Jewish, and they call us because they need help from someone who understand for building a shared society to work in this neighborhood. And the, 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 the municipality. But because they are very poor neighborhood and they're doing a problem. What I start try to say, and if you think about Led, Ramli, Akka, Haifa, Al Halisa, um, and Yafa, the most pe places that they can talk about or want to, you know, to build more shared, bring people together, even the, the Matnas in Led. Uh, at Chicago, it's bring the disadvantaged Led, community. Chicago. Led. Yeah, yeah. Chicago, it's Chicago. Chicago, but it's in Led. It's like a shared uh, community center with uh, every with the have a level and the Palestinians have a level. So what I just want to say about this, uh, it's diff I think it's because the privileged uh, community in Akka, at least from the years that we are start to work and understand the city, are really suffered. Akka, the prevalent, supper, su separated, separated, sorry. Um, and the, there is no yellow um, fence, but it's suffered. You know that this, even if the same neighborhood, you have a Jewish and Arab, it's, they, they, you, you have, you can know, they will not talk together, and even in Nazareth elite, and even in, in high. But poor neighborhood in Nazareth elite, People there are more close and more have relation and more have. And when we talk about gentrification, sometimes the Palestinian who go and live in Nazareth elite or Carmiel, they are gentrified. that gentrifies the poor people, the Jewish people in Nazareth oh, elite or because now it's really expensive to buy a house in Nazareth elite in Carmiel. And because Arab people who, we have a problem. Okay, so I think there is a difference. And, and 
it's important because you we bring we should bring people people should be very empowered until they can build a shared society and be part very equal they are not equal um so the politics you know it, it, i think what's happened in the Syrian elites was good because the palestinians their 4000 people live in jewish city and after many years they run to the municipality and and they uh, yeah, like if, if we, yeah. but, but then when they moved there, they didn't think that they will be part of the political life. And then they understand that in order to uh, apply for a school or share the school or mosque or anything, you know, uh, uh, theaters, education, culture, they have to be in power. So that's bring me to the last election. And you know, surely, and uh, every shared society leader have this tempting offer to join uh, Arab Jewish new party. And you know that, I, I'm sure. And uh, I think that the positive effect of what's happening, you know, the right-wing activists and the fascist government that we are suffering from the last two decades, uh, and, and also the attack against the left, the Jewish left, bring us together the same destiny. And from from bad reasons, from the wrong reasons, from violence, from uh, you know tracking us down and shrinking the um, the space of activism for for peace uh, educators, and maybe we have opportunity here. And uh, I want really to you to refer to uh, Andrew's question and do we have um, shared future as you know as a, as a political power? The poor poor left in Israel, the left left in Israel, the, the remained left in Israel, uh, yes, um, is now facing the ultimate issue of being left. It's the issue of nationalism. Uh, the the uh, equation that uh, was always in Israel in place is that you are Zionist leftist. And Zionism took um, uh, the, 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 the right path. And it, every decade, it went far, far from the further right from the left. I'm saying this as a Zionist myself. I know Samach doesn't like to hear this. But um, we're yeah, we're working on it. Um, <laughs> um, I'm saying this as a Zionist because I do think that, Zion, that initial Zionism can be left. Uh, it is true that history, uh, history led it to the right and the people, uh, the, the dominant people took it right. But when the left is torn now between being real left and the very deep sentiment of being Zionist. And the, it is very hard to understand that you can be a true left and a true Zionist in the same time. What does it mean, this Zionism? Let alone the left. Never mind. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're a leftist, and you, 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 you consider yourself a Zionist, what does it mean? Because it seems like, it's not the truth, but it seems like Zionism is all about being dominant over the Palestinians. What else is meaning? No, to me not. To me, being a Zionist is to believe, the belief, that the Jewish people has the right to live collective life in the land of Israel. The second sentence to me as a Zionist would be only with the Palestinians. I mean, it is a, a collective Jewish life in the land of Israel that is not coincide with the Palestinian people on complete, total, pure, equal terms is not Zionism. 
Okay? Now, when you say that, I, I can find a dozen people who would agree. I mean, actually, more and more professors now are writing about this, going back to the roots of Zionism, and f they find this in roots of Zionism. I call it civic Zionism. Zionism. Others call it uh, Chaim Gans, Professor Chaim Gans calls it uh, equal Zionism. Uh, uh, Dgani is now coming up with another, um, and, but it's all the same. It's Zionism that lives along with the Palestinians in, on equal terms. And what is equal terms? And what about the return? And, the, the, and, 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 and everything is open. But the very basic belief is there. Now, I think that this is the problem of the left. When you look at the mirror, of course, it's the contradiction. You, you, when you look at the mirror and you say, okay, I thought I have solved this equation. Okay? Um, most of the left Zionists wouldn't. Wouldn't because they wouldn't go as far as I agree to, to go. It, it, it is the question, what is Zionism? When you stop being Zionist, to me not, as long as you believe that the Jewish people has a right for collective life in the Eretz Israel. Why you are asking Palestinian refugee women, and she's feminist, to you know, solve your dilemmas about between Jewish, Israeli, Zionist, and why need this bullshit, you know, in order to be partner with you in any political movement? If you really believe that we are equal, and you have, you're Jewish, I am uh, Arab, <laughs> so why, why I need to heal your wounds and unsolve, you know, historical problems on my shoulders? Why, why I need to deal with that? It will be a little bit strange, but I want to, because I want nationalism, is, I think it's basic and very important. I, the identity, you know, to be the Palestinian, for me, is a basic to build a shared society. That's why it's really hard, but it means that I should understand from the other side uh, Zionism. Zionism. So, I believe that we can build a shared society and not be the same. It's okay. We shouldn't build a new identity in Israel, and that is the only way that we can be uh, equal, and that's the only way that we can be the same. The problem is, I think, and it's not the left, it's more talking about Zionism. If Israel is a Jewish country, how, where I am as a Palestinian, can it be equal and Jewish? No. No. And you especially, I don't know if, from where you, most of you, but you know, we just came from USA, and you know, as a minority who live there, you are the most people who can understand me as a minority. So the, the main issue, if we can talk about how this, this country can be a shared place for Palestinian and for Zionism, for Jewish and, uh, you know, Jewish as an as a identity, not, not as a religion, nation, nationalism and Palestinian. This is the important problem. This is our problem as, as a left, and I think the problem is that we are not building something. We all the time reflect to something that Bibi Netanyahu all the time I mean, doing for us. Don't, aim higher, like don't, aim too don't build anything now. Just uh, that, just that, 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 that think how we can, what is, the, even, even the last two elections, just talk, not Bibi. What yes? What what yes? What's the alternative? What we believe? What we want to build? What for a shared uh, party? For you talk about it, and you you will you will. Uh, I think now it technically can kill the left, and we see it in the last election 
when the journalists, when we all came together, we have more num member of the Knesset. If journalists, yeah, no. No. Kif, kif, if the, La, the I will talk about it how it killed the left, because uh, uh, the journalist is all the Arab party together. They are now the left. Ayman Aude, the leader of uh, the journalist. And this is, w in the last election in April, we don't have the journalist. And uh, less people, less Palestinian vote, and less member in the Knesset was. And when we have, bring back the journalist, more people vote, and we have more, we are the biggest, the third biggest party in the Knesset. Technically, now, for this step, for this period of to make it change, I think the left, the Jewish left Zionism should under, think how we can build more people to the circle of the left. And not just, sorry for this, Ashkenazi people. How we can bring people from the periphery, how we can bring Mizrahian people, how we can bring, how we as, as, a, as a Jewish, what? Russians, of course, Russians, of course. So this is the, the, the I think, the problem of the left, the Jewish uh, left. Technically now, if we will have Jewish Arab party, new one, and believe me, I work hard in the last two election, it will, I, it, it will be a disaster for the journalist and for the, for the merit and for, uh, this is at least what I believe and this is what I feel from the field, especially from the Palestinian field. It don't mean that we cannot build a power together, okay? It's be, build a power together as an Arab and Jewish to make a change. This is the only way that we can make a change here. This kind of a conversation, what you just heard, was, you couldn't even imagine it even three years ago, I'm not talking five years ago or 10 years ago. And that's the change. And the change, as far as I'm concerned, the change starts with the core. The core, I mean it, not just because I'm an idealist and I'm sold on this idea. The core starts with Neve Shalom starting you know, back in 75, 78, and starting to protocol and read and, and write the methods of getting people together who gather here. Hundreds of thousands of people who've come here just to listen to the conversations, to be part of conversations, go home back to their villages, their towns, schools, universities, affected by the conversation they heard. Because here it's okay, maybe not in their villages, to the, to the degree that the change is coming from the fact the representation of the minority Arab population in this country is standing up and walking right through the, the, the protocol of what we have as democracy here. And they're taking the right, they're seizing it, and they're becoming powerful for their own right and for the benefit of the entire society. And we're just starting to see it now. This, what you, what you just said, is that. I don't care, I don't care about a left weak, a right weak. Listen, if you want to talk about the left and the right, the left always use too many words to explain why they, they, they're right. And in, and, and in today's world, with social media, less words, just a slogan, and the right are brilliant with it. And they're populists, and they threaten you, and they drive the, 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 the multitude of the people who follow them is based on slogans, and we know that. We explain a lot. It's called populism, and, you know, we're the thinkers, and so we fall far behind, but it's going to come back. And you see, that this, this is amazing. And if you can't, if you don't walk out of this, just a little conversation, optimistic, and thinking, wow, what a future. And it's not tomorrow. It's far ahead of us. Hey, where is the future? Can you see it? Now, you've got to live it in the now, and you're part of it. This is, this is the place where, I think, it's the only place on earth. Do we know of another village of two peoples who actually don't want to be together, are forced upon each other, who actually vow to find a way and to write the protocol? for future generations. This is the only place in this great world with almost 8 billion people. Is there another place? I think that with, the, with David's words, um, we can't find um, 
positive um, sentence or summary of this uh, session.